today is um, Thursday, February the 28th, 2013, and this is my third video on the uh, HP 8903A audio analyzer. Right now it's running. These, dis these displays on there don't make a whole lot of sense. There, this is actually its voltage across uh, 8 ohms, and this is the frequency that it's running at right now. Display on the oscilloscope screen. You can see the frequency increasing ever so slightly. Okay, <clears throat> what I'm running here is some software by uh, Pete Millet at pmillet.com. P M I L L E T T dot com. I believe that's how it's spelled. Uh, see the readings over here. Start frequency 20 to 20 kilohertz, 100 points per decade. Got to keep this camera focused, though. There's its voltage, 16.16. The third trace. What I'm doing is I'm making bias adjustments. The top one was the first one, the yellow. Then there's the uh, blue, and then there's the pink here. You actually might be able to hear the hear it squealing in the background. There's its THD at the moment, 0.33. Frequency 853. <clears throat> okay, what I'm running it on is a laptop, Windows 7. I'm using the Agilent Technologies 82357A. Uh, it's a uh, IEEE 488 to USB interface, GB, GBIP, that just stands for General Purpose Interface Bus. And there's an HPIB, a Hewlett Packard Interface Bus. I am using the Agilent Connection 16.3 drivers for this, and I'm using the Agilent VEE VEE Pro 9.3 runtime, and uh, Pete Millet's uh, routines. He has four out on his website that you can download. Uh, when it gets through here, well, I can actually go ahead and show you what it's doing here. Let's minimize that. Oh yeah, I've also found out that, uh, that's my grandson when we were at uh, Trinity site one time with a Geiger counter and there's a little pile of Trinitite right there that he was about to measure. But if you bring up <clears throat> the, uh, the the screen here, right here, th these are the drivers. Let's bring this thing up. There it is. 16, Sweet 16, and 16.3 is what I'm running. That's the drivers that are compatible with uh, Windows 7. Comes up with an information page. Right here, I, I renamed this Audio Analyzer. There are some things that seem to be important about the name Audio Analyzer. I don't know all of that. I don't know if that was absolutely necessary. There's its address right there, 28. That's uh, a, an address that's hardwired, it, not hardwired, but it's put in with dip switches. Um, if you right click on this, you can say change properties. You can say refresh it and everything. I noticed that if I turn the auto identify this instrument off, then I get all green little check marks right there. I think you can see those. If you auto identify it, the little green check, uh, little green check mark goes away and a little red X comes up right there. That doesn't seem to keep it from running. It does run, but when I've, when you got it set up the way I've got it set up here, with that name, audio analyzer, and the auto identify off, I get green check marks everywhere. So that's cool. That's the driver portion. Now there is the um, the runtime program. The runtime program, which is the um, VEE Pro 9.3, you get that off of the Agilent site too. If you do the I/O configuration in here. This is the one right here that you got to change. The one that I had to change. I had to change this one. I renamed it to Audio Analyzer because I was getting some errors that says Audio Analyzer not found. And I think it has to be just like this. And also in Pete, if you read his documentation completely, his is looking for something at address 1428, which is right there. This one up here is probably the controller itself. The GBP, GBIP0 controller. This is probably a device under the controller. And this is some other, I don't know what this is. I don't really care. Anyway, I renamed this one because this one had the address 
that his software was looking for. Let's see. Right click. You just say uh, instrument properties. I believe it is. Yeah, right there is where I renamed it audio analyzer. And that seems to work. Okay, and then in the end, the dumbest thing that bit me for a long time is you got to go right up here to this little guy that says save IO configuration. Don't forget to click on that because if you don't click on that and save it, it doesn't get saved. And uh, you can work on it for a long time and, and not get anywhere. Okay, let's bring it back up. <clears throat> there it is. It's, well, it's not quite complete yet. It's still running over here at uh, about 8 kilohertz. Oh, yeah, sorry for the camera. There's its uh, spectral display. The, the big one is it's fundamental because I'm sweeping at uh, 5 kilohertz per division. So it's got a couple harmonics out there. Cool. I love this thing. Man, this stuff is like magic. There it is right there. It's about to complete its third plot. Uh, like I say, this is actually just three different bias settings. Anyway, that's all I know about it. Uh, it's working. It's a beautiful thing. I highly recommend it. If you have one of these instruments, you have to get the interface. But if you get that, there you go. Gotta, gotta keep this darn thing in focus. I like sharp focus on YouTube videos. 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. 100 points per decade. It runs slower, but it makes a very detailed plot there. See, it's almost finished. Uh, it asks you some questions. If you get this far to making this run, you will uh, you will have no problem in uh, in figuring the rest of it out. So I hope this helps everybody and preserves these beautiful old instruments uh, for a long time to come.